Hello, everybody. My name is Dax Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Commercial Services and Solutions at the HDF Group. Um, I'd like to present and introduce you to our next speaker, Lewick Ruder. Um, his presentation is about H5 Web, which is an open source web-based viewer being developed at ESRF. Thank you for the introduction. I'm going to share my screen now. So you can see the slide. Can you hear me, by the way? Yes. OK, great. So yes, so today I'm going to talk to you about H5 Web, which is a web-based viewer of HDF5 file that we are developing at uh, ESRF in uh, Grenoble, France. So you can see here a picture of Grenoble and here a picture uh, of the ESRF, which is a ring here. I'd like to first give a few words about ESRF. ESRF is an international synchrotron. So it accelerates particles to produce X-rays. And then uh, these X-rays are used for many scientific applications. So people, for example, are looking at lay layer of paints. Uh, they are looking at uh, kidneys or bones uh, for biology or proteins, looking at nanomaterials, uh, anything that you need to see the inside of the structure, basically. And uh, so we have many scientists coming at ESRF to come do their experiment and uh, acquire data. And uh, why am I talking to you about this? It's because now uh, HDF5 is the standard format for the data that is acquired at ESRF, all right? And uh, in addition to the fact that now the, when, scientists, when a scientist comes at ESRF and acquires data, in addition to the fact that it will be saved at HDF5, HDF5 file, uh, this file will also follow another specification, which is called Nexus, which is a standard format uh, to structure the HDF5 files, uh, the, um, so that uh, I can show here I show an, uh, an example of this hierarchy. So the HDF5 files have a very particular hierarchy with groups that have particular attributes, so, so such as uh, NX entry, NX data that are specialized Nexus attributes, and in these groups you store the data sets that will be the real data, in fact, that was acquired at USRF. Here, I show you another picture where uh, there is here uh, the data that was acquired at the detector. And here, uh, perhaps you do not see that well, but uh, just know that it is another uh, particular structure uh, following the Nexus specification. And um, the fact with Nexus is why it's very practical. Switching to AJ5 Nexus can be difficult for users and scientists because, as I've shown you, with this particular Nexus hierarchy, uh, it uh, adds several several uh, layers of hierarchy, several several groups, and sometimes it can be hard to retrieve both the data uh, in uh, Nexus files, all right? And also, uh, scientists may have uh, previous data analysis or acquisition tools uh, that were adapted to another format and uh, now need to be adapted to this new format. And to do this, they need uh, to know what will be inside these HDF5 files and what will be the structure, how can they retrieve the data, and so on. And the nice thing to do this is to have a graphical user interface so that you can click, easily visualize, and browse the HDF5, the HDF5 file content, and uh, really look at where your data is located and what you should do to uh, get it and retrieve it. All right. So a few requirements about uh, the software. So as I said, it could it is a user interface, a graphical user interface, so that uh, because uh, interaction needs to be uh, easy. And uh, in terms of basic requirements, the software should allow browsing the hierarchy of the HDF5 files because you need to see all the Nexus groups and so on, and where where how they are linked with respect to each other. Inspecting the HDF5 entities because uh, as I said, the Nexus uh, file format adds several attributes uh, that gives you where is the data, where is um, if, if it is a process or an entry and so on. So you need to be able to inspect these. And also the most interesting part perhaps is uh, you will be you need to be able to display the data because the uh, HDF5 data sets because in the end this is the data that you are interested in. All right. I should also add another few requirements. Uh, for us at USRF is that the software should be flexible to be deployed in other applications because we have a lot of software developing 
a software development going on around HDF5 files for data acquisition, for example. And so it would be nice when we develop such uh, tools to be able to reuse them in other applications. And also, because we deal sometimes with data acquisition, uh, we need to match the acquisition rate of the the acquisition rate. And so these visualizations need to be performant enough to match this acquisition rate. All right. So these are the two requirements that I add on the top of this. And so our answer is what I'm going to present you today, which is H5Web. H5Web is a web application written in React. Uh, if you don't know React, it's a JavaScript framework to write user interface. And the nice thing about React is that, uh, for example, if you look at a web page, uh, you will see different what React calls components, which are the basic blocks that build your web page. You will have a navigation bar, you will have button or forms to submit your data. And with React, you are able to write these uh, self-contained uh, components so that they are more easily uh, a, so that you are you can extract them and reuse them easily in other contexts. So this is for the um, sorry, this is for the flexible part that I'm talking about, that was what took, that I was talking about. And the development uh, started in February of this year uh, in the frame of the PANOS project. Uh, the PANOS project is an European initiative. Uh, PANOS stands for Photon and Neutron Open Science Cloud. It is an European project to promote open data and open source, soft, open source software. Uh, for uh, better reproducibility and better science in general. And uh, so a requirement, a requirement to develop the software was to make it open source. So you can check out the source uh, on GitHub. And also for another perhaps technical point is that it is a front-end application, all right? It will, uh, the code will be executed on the client side and then it will request the HDA5 metadata and data to a server-side provider. All right, so here you will see this is a front, uh, schema of the front-end application and it will request the data uh, to a server uh, provider. And we are quite flexible in that. We uh, have made some proof of concept with HSDS, so it works with HSDS, um, but uh, we can also accommodate other provider to get the data. Uh, All right, now I just wanted to show you a small demo of our tool. So the demo is available online. You can also check it out yourself. So here is the basic layout of the application. You have here the, the tree explorer where you can browse your, uh, you can browse your HDF5 file. So for now, this, this is mock data, all right? This is not uh, really data that was request to HSDS. It was request as a JSON, but to another website but uh, this is just a uh, de detail. And here you have the main area where you can display things and also ins inspect them. So now I have selected a group, so there's nothing to visualize, but I can inspect it and see all the information about the link, uh, about the group and the attributes, as I said. So for example, here you have a special, uh, special attribute uh, of Nexus, it's called NX class. And uh, if you are interested, you can also look at the raw data that was provided by uh, the, the server, all right? So this, is, uh, this was for a group and I can select also a data set. So here, for example, it's a very simple data set that stores a string. And if I go back to display now, then I can display the value of this data set, all right? So nothing, uh, nothing too fancy here. So I can perhaps select another data set so here I have selected uh, this data set here that is a 1D data set that contains uh, 1,000 uh, points, 1,000 uh, floating, floating point values. And I can display it uh, as uh, two possible uh, visualization. So either as a matrix, so I can really look at uh, the numbers that are inside this data set, all right? Or as a line, as I've shown you here, and uh, I want to point, uh, I want to highlight the fact that in fact, this visualization here, it's uh, based on WebGL for, uh, because we need, as I said, some performance visualization. And with uh, WebGL, we are able to uh, compute things on the GPU. So it is much faster than 
computing things directly on the CPU. And so because we wanted to do this, we uh, have basically written this uh, visualization component ourselves and uh, using React 3 Fiber, which is a React renderer for WebGL. And so we had to re-implement uh, quite a lot of basic stuff, but uh, you have all the features that you would expect from a, uh, from a line visualization. So we have the tooltip here, we can zoom, uh, pan the visualization, um, display as point uh, rather than line, uh, use a log scale and so on. Well, really all the basic stuff that you would expect from a line visualization. Now I can look at another data set, which is 2D data set. So for example, this one. Okay, so it depends on the color map, but as you can see, this data set, it's uh, 1000 by 1000, so 1 million point, and it takes more or less one second to display uh, 1 million points. So it's good, but uh, we can do better, and we have, because it's based on WebGL, we, can, uh, we have room for improvement on that, we are not blocked for, by the performance. For now, it's enough for us. So uh, there are no uh, huge development on that, but we know that we can do better. And again, you will uh, have all the, there are all the basic features that you would expect from a 2D, uh, 2D heat map. So the zoom, the panning, the tooltip, uh, the, the change, changing the color map, uh, changing the domain of the color map, uh, go to a log color map. All right. And uh, we also support uh, n dimensional data set with uh, slicing of the data set. So, for example, here I have a 2D data set, and I may be interested in looking an, uh, at a row or a column uh, in a 1D plot. So, I can go to the line visualization here, and uh, I can slice through one dimension and display the other. So for example, here I'm looking at the dimension one and I'm slicing to dimension zero. I can slice through dimension zero or I can do the other way around, look at dimension zero and slice through dimension one. And so this is for a 2D data set, a line of a 2D data set, but uh, we have n-dimensional support, meaning that if you have a 3D data set, then you will have another slider to have, the sli um, to have uh, another slice. And basically you can, the app supports n-dimensional data sets. All right. So this is what I wanted to show you in the demo. So this is just uh, what I've said written down. Uh, just wanted to point out that now the visualization components that we have written uh, are available as NPM packages. So that means that uh, we are able to extract them and reuse them in uh, other contexts. And in fact, this is uh, the next step that we are looking at. Uh, there are other web app, app at ESRF that are written in React that could use our visualization components. So we are now working uh, with them to try to integrate uh, our visualization in their app. We are also interested in exporting the visualization in a JupyterLab uh, context. So for example, as a JupyterLab extension, uh, to use them uh, in uh, JupyterLab, as I said, or in Jupyter Notebook, because I think that would be interesting to have performed visualization in there as well. And uh, the other step, the other thing that we are looking to right now is the Nexus support. So I've shown you that there are uh, special attributes in the Nexus file uh, to, um, to know uh, which is the plot that you should uh, display by default. For example, we're selecting a special group uh, to put the axis label, or what should be put in ax uh, which should be put in x axis or in y axis, and uh, for now there's no interpretation on that. And uh, if we can implement this and still improve the visualizations that we have right now. So this was uh, quite short. I just wanted to show you a bit uh, what we are developing right now at USRF. And I would like to thank you for your attention and mention uh, so a few links. So the source that I've already gave you, the demo, uh, the documentation uh, of the components that we are exporting, the packages. And I would like also to mention that this project was funded by the Panos project and also that we received a new open grant for this. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much. I think we have about five minutes if anybody has questions for Louis. 
I think there we have one. Window. Yeah, from from John Reedy in the chat window. Other than HSDS, what HDF servers are you using? Is the HDF REST API used for each? Uh, we looked a bit at uh, the. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to look at the chat. Uh, no, I can't find it. Sorry. Uh, we are. We uh, there is also a Max4, which is also developing a uh, web viewer, and they develop their own backend to serve HDF5 files. And we looked a bit at that, and I, I tried to integrate. But um, yeah, is there also some kind of REST API? But uh, it was something a bit um, difficult to use. And so in the end, we didn't use. And uh, as I said, there is in the Jupyter Lab extension, there is a, I don't know if you're aware of, but there is a Jupyter Lab HDF5 extension that also exists. And they also have their own backend to provide uh, the uh, to provide the data sets, attribute, and so on. And we are also looking into this uh, uh, because it would be interesting for us if we want to integrate in a Jupyter in, Jup in a Jupyter Lab environment to use directly their backend. And there are two other questions in the chat window. Uh, can you read them to me? Because I I lost my Zoom window. I cannot find them anymore. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the first question was: Have you looked at using ZFP for compression? Uh, um, the data is already compressed, in fact. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure about it, uh, because the, the data in itself, I mean, it lives in a file and it could be compressed, all right? It's just a matter of opening the file. So I'm not really sure about this question. And then the, the second question, um, is what are the advantages of H5 Web versus HDF5 Web GUI? HDF5 Web GUI. I didn't look in detail into it, but uh, as I said, uh, what we are trying to do is to use uh, recent tools such as React and uh, React 3 Fiber with just the WebGL uh, visualization to write something that is really uh, performant and flexible. And so I don't know, uh, as I said, I didn't look in detail into the web GUI. Uh, so I cannot really comment on that, but uh, this is what we had in mind. Yeah, and, and John really added another comment. Um, you may want to check out HTTP compression in the latest HSDS release. Ah, that would be interesting, yes. All right. Thank you very much, Louis.